Hello everyone, this is the Kalpar of Kalpar's Arsenal. I'm appearing to you in the flesh, more or less, today, and I wanted to take the opportunity to talk to you because there's been an issue that's been bugging me for a couple of months now. Uh, as some of my readers may remember, I reviewed a book called Walker uh, a couple of months ago, and I didn't really like it because I had some issues with how it portrayed female characters, and they were sort of a stereotypical strong independent woman TM sort of character, registered trademark. And the reason I add the TM is because these characters are packaged by the corporate media, and they're sort of sold off as a, look, we're feminist, we're including strong female characters in our media, but they're, they always seem to be exactly the same and I'm gonna go a little bit more into that basically when we critics say we want a strong female character we don't necessarily mean that she has to be physically strong or emotionally strong or anything like that what she needs to be is well developed she needs to be able to stand up with the other male characters and be memorable you know it's not oh she's the there and she's the love interest la -di da so our point is that she's well developed that's what we mean as critics by strong however what the media has done and this is in movies this is in tv shows this is in books is they will make a female character strong either physically or emotionally or mentally she's very typically she'll be very walled off from other people she won't let other people into her personal emotions and this defines her as strong now the problem with this character and you know it's there's this is acceptable this is an acceptable character archetype but there are several problems first of all this is the only way they're showing strong independent woman tm and that's not what we meant we keep getting this and this isn't what we meant all of the female characters are coming out the same the other problem with this is that inevitably almost all of these strong independent women characters have some sort of terrible trauma in their backstory which makes them become strong and independent and this is usually uh, I mean I hate to say it but it's usually like rape or molestation or something really bad and it, it just undermines their characters and I, I had ran into this issue in Walker. We run it. We have the character Aya, and she's first of all she's physically strong. But you know that's that's fine. There's there's tough women out there. The people women who lift massive weights in the Olympics, and that's awesome. They're strong women. That's that's perfectly fine for them to be physically strong. The problem is that Aya's backstory is she was in an abusive relationship and she was raped by her husband. And in this case, rape meaning non-consensual sex, even though they're married. And that's, that's, that's all her backstory. Her backstory is she was raped, that's why she's a super awesome warrior now. And it just so completely trivializes the issue of rape. And rape is this terrible thing, and it causes so many psychological issues over many years, and... Uh, I know people who are still suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder because of a rape that happened 10, 12 years ago, and it's so frustrating to see, you know, such a traumatic and life-shattering event be trivialized as, oh, that's her backstory, and now she's this super awesome warrior because she powered through it or something. It's, it's a terrible way of writing, and we keep getting it in fiction, and... It really, we really, as critics and as viewers and as audiences, we need to say this isn't what we meant by strong, independent women. We don't want to keep seeing this in our fiction. Now, you're probably asking, what sort of characters do I mean when I mean strong, independent women? What are some examples? And fortunately, I have a couple of examples. First one I want to refer to is the Dealing with Dragons. Uh, this is the first book of the Enchanted Forest Chronicles by uh, Pat Patricia C. Reed. And the main character of this book, uh, 
Simmerine, Princess Simmerine, you can see her here on the cover. Uh, she's a very well developed female character. She starts, and the whole series, and I really recommend you go read this if you haven't already, is it's sort of a deconstruction and satirization of typical fairy tale and fantasy tropes. And Simmerine is a princess, and she's raised as a princess. She's taught embroidering and, poly and manners and how to be courteous and all this stuff. And it's boring. She thinks it's terribly boring. She doesn't want to be a princess. So she runs out, and while she's still living with her parents, uh, she learns how to cook, she learns how to fence, she learns how to do magic, and she does all these things because being a princess is boring. That's not what she wants to do. And basically, she eventually gets so fed up with being a princess, and this is in like the first chapter of the book, she runs away from home, and she goes off and has all these awesome adventures, which are covered throughout the books in the series. And that's, that's just one example of a strong character who went off and did awesome things, and she didn't have, you know, rape or emotional trauma as a backstory. Her backstory is, it's boring being a princess, I'm going to go do something awesome. That's, that's a perfectly great backstory. Another character in the Enchanted Forest Chronicles that I think deserves some mention is the witch Morwen. And I bring her up because she's a good example of another female character. She's, uh, you know, an untraditional witch. She's not, you know, an ugly hag who's all going around cackling, ah, ha, ha, I'm from Macbeth, ah, ha, ha, on the heath, all that stuff. No, she's, you know, sort of unassuming. She has, she doesn't, and in the third book, uh, Calling on Dragons, she runs into an issue. There's some guy, I forget his name, but there's a guy who wants all of the various witches to sort of conform to his standard, which is they have to wear all black and they have to be cackling and threaten to eat children. They're only allowed one black cat. And Morwen has an issue with this because she doesn't really want to go around threatening to eat children and be an ugly hag. And she has more than one cat. She has like a dozen cats and none of them are black. And she just simply refuses to make someone else be what she isn't and that's that's another great example of a character you know she's she's a witch she's going to be her own version of a witch and she doesn't need someone else to tell her no she's doing it wrong and she's just going to do whatever because she likes doing it you know um and then of course and my long time readers will probably assume that i'm going to go here next but another example of a good well-developed strong female character is Agatha Heterodyne uh, from the uh, Girl Genius series. I don't have the graphic novels because I'm not that rich, unfortunately, but I do have the novelizations of it. Uh, this is Agatha H. and the Clockwork Princess. But uh, basically, Agatha is the lost heterodyne heir. She is a spark. Uh, for those of you that haven't read Girl Genius yet, a spark is a any person who has whatever it is to become a mad scientist and they go off and make awesome adventure inventions and basically the premise of girl genius boiled down to a sentence is mad scientists rule the world badly anyway agatha heterodyne is a spark she has an incredible aptitude for engineering so in her early life her foster parents and uh her professors give her opportunities to study engineering and metallurgy and mechanics and all this other stuff, which enables her to develop her spark potential and become this really awesome mad scientist. And that's that's a good backstory. And yes, her parents are dead, but she had perfectly good foster parents as well. And, you know, she goes off... And because of circumstances, she's forced to go off on these adventures. But she doesn't have this traumatic backstory of she was, you know, the, she doesn't have this stereotypical traumatic backstory which forces her to go on her adventures. And furthermore, uh, she eventually becomes this really good fighter thanks to Zetha. And the reason she does this is as the lost heterodyne heir, Agatha is 
you know, wanted dead by a significant number of very powerful people. And if she's going to stay alive, she has to know self-defense training. And so to help her stay alive, Zetha, uh, this warrior princess who's sort of a parody of, uh, I guess, Xena and other sort of warrior people, trains her in uh, this secret martial arts style and that and so Agatha becomes you know physically strong and you know is able to kick ass with the best of them and you know this is like a perfectly good backstory opposed to what we keep getting in fiction is that Agatha is in physical danger and so they develop her physical fighting skills in an attempt to help her survive. That's 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 a great example. And then, you know, as I mentioned earlier, Zetha, she's this warrior princess. Her backstory is she comes from this warrior culture. And so that's why she's capable of doing all these awesome fighting maneuvers. You know, it's not because she had some sort of traumatic past. It's because her past is, hey, I was a fighter. I come from a fighter culture, and so this is why I know how to do this stuff. And is, is it simplistic? Yes, but it's a perfectly acceptable backstory anyway. And so I think what we, my point here is that there are plenty of examples here, and I'm sure there are other examples in fiction, but we need, as consumers of media, we need to work on demanding better origins for our female heroine, or female main characters, because we have plenty of male protagonists, and their backstories range all over the place. We have male characters who have some sort of significant trauma as their backstory. For example, Batman, his parents are killed right in front of him, that's his motivation for fighting crime, and that's why he becomes super awesome, and Batman. But we also have male characters like Superman, who's just awesome because he's from Krypton. That's that's why he's awesome. All of his awesomeness comes from his being Krypton. And if you go back, male heroes have never really needed a reason to be awesome, to kick ass, take names, all that stuff. If you go back, Beowulf, never really needed a reason to be awesome. Gilgamesh, never needed a reason to be awesome. Ram, never needed a reason to be awesome. All these male heroes, going back thousands of years, have never needed a reason to be awesome. However, our female characters need some sort of terrible trauma which forces them to become awesome. And I think it is a perpetuation of awful gender stereotypes. And as audiences, as readers and viewers, we need to say, no, this is unacceptable, and we need to move on from this. Anyway, uh, thank you for taking your time to watch me blather on about this today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and you can read other rantings uh, by myself at Calpar's Arsenal. Uh, Let me know if you like this video. I may do more in the future. We'll see how this one goes over. And uh, come back next week uh, when I go into more reviews about awesome books.